Today I have brought you a crime and mystery movie. This is the movie called The Loft which was released in 2014. So let's go to the story. In the interrogation room of the police station, a man under investigation on suspicion of murder is being interrogated by male and female detectives. Mr. Vincent Stevens' Carl Urban gives his interpretation of the series of events. A flashback to the previous day begins with a man named Luke Wentworth Miller arriving at a New York loft that morning, and a sex scene between him and a blonde woman. When he entered the room and put down his bag, he saw a dead woman lying face down on his bed, her wrists cut and covered in blood. In the interrogation room, Vincent tells the police that his wife was out skiing with the kids, then Luke calls him and tells him to hurry to the attic. Cut to the attic from the previous day, where Vincent comes in and witnesses Luke and the body. Vincent and Luke are talking, the windows are sealed, the door is locked, and the alarm is off. In other words, he has only five keys and cannot be copied, so someone must have used one of his keys to break in. Returning to interrogation, Vincent denies ever going into the attic, but police discover that Vincent and four other men used the attic to have sex with his lovers one of whom was Luke. I already knew what I was sharing. Back at the loft, Chris James Marsden enters. Then Marty Eric Stonestreet enters. No one can believe this is happening. They turn her body over, but have no idea who she is. It then cuts to a flashback going back in time. Party. His friends Vincent, Marty, Chris, Philip, and Luke talk about the women there and ignore his wife. Vincent, Luke, and Marty are all architects and celebrate Vincent's projects. Chris begins talking to a beautiful blonde woman named Ann Morris. Chris is a psychiatrist who was treating his sister who apparently suffered from a mood disorder and later committed suicide. She says that Chris apologizes for neglecting her nurse's treatment, but she ignores it and says that half of her family suffers from mood disorders and that some people are born unhappy. Chris' wife Allison witnesses their interaction and is not happy about it. Vincent takes his friends upstairs to the loft and tells them of his plans to share it for a secret rendezvous. Loft. Luke panics as he tries to contact the fifth man, Phil. There is a message in Latin above the bed, and a message written in blood on the wall, Fatim knows Eungebit. There was a farewell letter saying, backquote backquote let's meet again in another life. In the interrogation room, Chris explains that the Latin word means, fate brings us together. However, he tells the interrogator that he had one form of that word wrong, it should have been, Eungit, instead of, Eungabit. They start asking where their half-brother Philip is, but he doesn't know. Chris and Philip have the same mother but different fathers. Philip's father is an alcoholic, and Philip is thrown into a nursing home. When I returned to the loft, Philip finally appeared. The other men accuse him of committing a crime, but no one will admit anything. To Philip's wedding to a woman named Vicky Fry from a few months ago. The men again talk rudely about the women's attendance until they realize that local politician Joel Kotkin is also invited. Kotkin is a friend of Philip's father-in-law. Vincent gives the keys to Philip and three others as a wedding present. Receiving a key means agreeing to certain rules, such as telling others via text his message the time the loft will be booked, and not going to the loft if it is occupied. To do. Chris says he doesn't want the key and teases Vincent that he's not that kind of person. Marty says she's a little nervous because her wives are almost there, but she keeps talking about the wedding ladies anyway. Marty notices Philip's beautiful sister and Chris' half-sister, Zoe, 
and she makes her rude comments about her. This causes Philip to threaten Marty, never say anything about my sister. Chris meets Anne again as an invited guest of Kotlin and goes to talk to her privately. He approaches her and asks her to lend Vincent her key, just once. We must make sure no one loses their keys. They all have theirs, except Chris, who said it wasn't his fault, but he hasn't lost it. Flashback. Chris hosts a dinner party for the boys and their wives. It appears that he and his wife Allison are going through a difficult time. At the table, Marty's wife Mimi tells the story of how her boss's wife caught Marty cheating, and then they discuss her plastic surgery. This causes a drunken Marty to start making mean comments towards Chris' wife and the argument escalates. He then starts talking about how his boss should have escaped and hints that he might be able to use the secret attic. Chris kicks Marty's chair and Marty collapses, stopping the conversation while the women wonder what's going on. Luke and his wife Ellie witness Philip doing cocaine in the bathroom. She asks Luke if he wants someone else since he takes insulin injections for diabetes. She suggests that she wouldn't mind if he finds sexual satisfaction elsewhere, but he assures her that is not necessary. Loft. The guys try to figure out what to do, how to get their bodies out. She is handcuffed to the bed. Flashback of Chris and Anne having sex in the attic. He tells her that he loves her girlfriend and is going to break up with her wife, which worries her very much. She tells him that she is a prostitute, but that for the past few months she has not charged a fee. Asian. Marty is questioned by the police. He and his wife say he is legally separated after his wife caught him cheating on her with someone he met at work in San Diego. Business trip flashback. Vincent, Marty, and Luke meet a woman named Dana at a bar. Marty tries to turn her down because she's not skinny, but Vincent assures her that tall women always have cute girlfriends and buys her a drink. They discover that Philip's father-in-law, Hiram Fry, is with another woman apparently cheating on his wife. Ann Morris is also there with Hiram's friend Joel Kotkin. Fry notices the men who attended his daughter's wedding, and he pays for their drinks, trying to buy their silence about being seen with other women. He spoke directly to Vincent about working on a possible design project at the company and said something in Latin about discretion. Back at home, Chris tries to call Anne, but is caught by his wife Allison, who accuses Chris of having done something. While Vincent and Marty are chatting with Dana at the bar, a beautiful blonde friend named Sarah shows up. In the interrogation room, Vincent says it was his first time meeting the police. The four of them, including Luke, head to the rooftop where the pool is. Marty and Dana leave because Dana has drunk too much and feels sick. Vincent strips naked in response to a challenge from Sarah, and Sarah pushes him into the pool. She then begins to unzip her dress and shows Luke her ass. After Sarah is completely naked, she has a seductive conversation with Vincent in the pool, leading to sex as Luke watches. Luke gets up and walks away and watches from behind as Marty has sex with Dana. Returning to the loft, Vincent was about to tell the boys that he had been there the day before, when the phone buzzer rang. It's a woman who wants to come here because someone is putting her loft up for sale, and she has an appointment with a woman named, Sarah. Vincent tells Luke and Marty that it is Sarah lying in her bed and that they both know her. Marty was drunk and doesn't remember her. They run to the balcony to see if the woman calling them recognizes them, which they don't, and confront Vincent. He tells them that he was there the night before and broke up with her, but had nothing to do with her murder. 
Chris gets angry and throws the glass at the wall. Flashback. On the street, Chris follows Anne into her shop and confronts her. She tells him that she was paid to have sex with him, but nothing more. He doesn't care that his girlfriend is a whore, he loves her and he just wants her. She does not believe him and says that he probably took many women to the attic. As a sign of his determination, he gives her her key. From now on, she can decide when to use the attic. She leaves and gets into her car with Joey Kotlin, leading him to believe that he paid her to sleep with him. During interrogation, Luke admitted to having met the deceased woman, Sarah. They ask if he is jealous of her and hint that he is her homosexual and has feelings for her for Vincent. Luke vehemently denies this. The police tell them that Vincent is betraying them. Flashback. One night, Marty shows up at the loft, knocks on the door, and yells to Vincent that Dana has told his wife everything and that she is leaving him. He asks Vincent for help. Vincent goes to Mimi and he promises to tell her that Marty loves her and that Dana is lying about her. Loft. Chris gives Vincent a drink. Philip picks up the knife left on the bed and threatens Vincent for killing Sarah. The other men overpowered him and the knife ended up in Vincent's hands. Vincent and Chris turn things around and say that Philip himself will be the more obvious suspect. A flashback shows Philip being handcuffed to the bed of a prostitute in the attic. She cries and shows signs of abuse, while Philip is high on cocaine. Chris and Vincent show up and Philip starts ranting about prostitutes brandishing knives and overcharging them. The woman says he forced her to have sex against her will, but Philip simply says, backquote backquote you can't rape a prostitute. Chris violently attacked his half-brother, telling him he was no different from his alcoholic and abusive father. Later. Philip revealed that while Chris and her sister Zoe had to endure endless physical abuse at the hands of their father, while Chris grew up in a comfortable life and enjoyed his college years, his girlfriend, S. Mother started shouting that she had tolerated it silently. Chris says he had no idea about the dire situation his half-brother and half-sister were in, and if he had known, he would have done everything he could to save them. Chris tries to convince the prostitute not to go to the police by paying her, but the prostitute says no. Chris tells Philip that he will never forgive himself for this. This story is new to Marty and Luke. Luke then speaks up and admits that he was recording their entire encounter. He showed them a hidden camera and an area where they could view footage recorded on CD. He is then accused of being a pervert, having orgasmed while watching, but never used the attic to cheat on his wife. But last night, he didn't take Vincent and Sarah with him because Vincent didn't tell him he was coming. Night before, Vincent told his wife that he could not go on the ski trip due to work commitments. Allison constantly blames Chris. He asks her if she is the one seeing someone else. Vincent has not yet heard about the project offered to him by Hiram. He approached Hiram, Joel Kotkin, and their wives and asked them about the status of the projects they had promised. Since Hiram can't make any guarantees, Chris suggests they meet at a bar in San Diego to pressure Hiram. Mar. Ty's wife Mimi shows up unexpectedly at a fundraiser. He desperately wants her back but she comments on his cheating and hints that she may already be sleeping with someone else. Philip and her sister Zoe are there, but she is bothered by the fact that she feels her outfit is too revealing. He tells his wife Vicky about it, but Vicky is not interested in his concerns. She apparently knew of his frequent fornications with prostitutes and drug use and admitted to occasionally stealing from his stash of cocaine and she told him to disappear. 
Anne was there and texted Chris to go to the bathroom. There, Joel Kotkin approaches Chris and warns him that his friend Vincent is playing with fire and that he should be restrained. They discuss Anne, but Kotkin doesn't owe her anything, and she says Anne is free to sleep with whomever she wants. Chris asks if he was the one who paid Anne for sex, but Kotkin denies this, saying that he was the only one who paid Anne the money in the first place. Philip goes to get Zoe, but gets into a violent fight with the man he was with. Hiram tells Philip that he never wants to see him again and that he wants to stay away from his daughter. Zoe cries to Vincent, who comforts her, but then sees Sarah. He tells Sarah that she is just her friend's sister. He tells Sarah he loves her, but it's not that simple. He tells her to meet him in her attic, but Sarah tells him she can help him with his decision. She walks towards a group of women, including Vincent's wife, but Luke bumps into her and tells her to stop, saying, you'll regret it. Cut to the attic. Vincent becomes sleepy and falls to the ground. It turns out that the drink Chris gave him had drugs in it, and that the men had set a trap for him. Flashback to that morning. Luke calls for everyone else except Vincent after finding Sarah drugged and suicidal in her bed. Luke then shows him all the videos he made to prove that Vincent had been betraying his friends for months. There is footage of Vincent sleeping with Sarah, Anne, Marty's wife Mimi, and Philip's sister Zoe. The only time he slept with Mimi was the night after Marty got her drunk and begged him to talk to her, she told Mimi about it at her fundraiser, alluded to. Immediately after Philip's wedding, he began sleeping with Zoe, and he was her first. After realizing that Chris was interested in Anne, he once paid her to seduce Chris so they could share a loft and become an accomplice in her affair. After learning this, all four agree to frame Vincent for suicide as long as he admits that he was there last night. Chris breaks the glass and signals that he can trap him. It takes him two hours to figure this out and find an alibi. With images of himself and his sister flashing through his mind, Philip snorts cocaine, cuts Sarah's wrists, uses the blood to write a Latin text, and writes in his suicide note that she and he are two different worlds. It was written that they would be tied together, so he cut Sarah. Handcuff her to the bed for her life. Back at the loft, they continue shoving pills and alcohol down Vincent's throat. They threw him naked onto a bed and handcuffed him and Sarah. In the interrogation room, Vincent tells the police the whole story of how his friends tried to frame him for the girl's suicide and subsequent mutilation, but all evidence that they were ever there in the first place has been eliminated. They don't know anything because they are there. Everyone has an alibi for that morning, and Hiram Fry concocts one for Philip to punish Vincent for trying to blackmail him about his affair. All the investigators have is a suicide note, pills, and a knife with fingerprints on it. He tries to convince her to continue interrogating the remaining four, hoping one of them will relent. The interrogator lets Chris go, but stops and asks if Vincent is guilty why are they indicting everyone. She asks him if he thinks they are trying to cover up something else, her murder. Chris thought it was suicide, but she said an examination of her revealed no damage to her wrist and that her sleeping pills could not have caused her death. Furthermore, she did not have a will. I was curious because Chris had it in his jacket pocket. Chris is in the attic, but Luke shows up. Chris asks Luke when he stole the suicide note from his bag. Chris finds out that Luke is the one who put the loft up for sale. When someone called in the attic, Luke must have taken advantage of the confusion and stole the note from Chris' pocket. Chris finds a note in the trash, it's in Luke's handwriting. 
Luke admits that he has been in love with Sarah ever since they met in San Diego, but Vincent has always been between them. When she left from her fundraiser, he chased her and begged her to give him a chance, but she doesn't feel anything for him now, maybe she's in another life. I told him it might be possible. His wife witnessed this confrontation. After the fundraiser, Luke thought he would find Vincent in the attic with Sarah while his wife Barbara was skiing. After Vincent leaves, he enters the house and drugs Sarah. He then injected her with his wife's insulin, which should have resulted in a painless and instant death, but it could not be determined for sure. He said he did it out of love for him. However, Chris revealed that neither her pills nor her insulin killed her. She died only when she was slashed by Philip. Chris tells Luke that Vincent has been charged with murder, but Luke reminds him that it was his brother who killed her. Luke attacks Chris with a knife and goes to the balcony. He tells Chris to jump off so he doesn't have to kill him. Chris tells them that he already called the police when he heard the sirens and told them everything. Chris regains control, the knife is dropped, and Luke holds Chris over the edge and strangles him. He stands up and picks up the knife. Luke tells Chris to tell Ellie and his kids he's sorry, then falls backwards off the balcony, landing on a car below and falling to his death. Flashback six months later, Marty is back with his wife Mimi, who has forgiven him. Philip is awaiting trial and Vincent lives in the attic, the only thing his ex-wife left after their divorce. Chris is also divorced and is expecting a child next weekend. Anne grows closer to Chris, and the two appear to have a new start.